Government to cover Willock's legal fees. Cruise line increases calls to the British Virgin Islands and the West End Terminal. Officially recommissioned. King Pedro is still king. Cynthia Brown walks free this week and this week's weekly arrest blotter. These and more stories when 284 News returns. Why are you really running for a boss? You could have bust a hole in your head. But well, see with the competition. It's means about to bust a hole in your pocket. I could get my modem, please. Anyhow, I got something huge to show you. Eh? You gotta be sick in your head. The whole last string being thinner kind of party. Check this. That's LTE1 for just about everyone. LTE2 for you and your book. The whole on. Bam! Great solo, you feel like you're free. That's LTE tree for you and the whole family. Save even more on your internet with new pricing from CCT. Get LTE 2 now for only $149. Get LTE 3 for the new low price of $189. All packages are unlimited, so there's no overage charge. You don't have to run into chats for savings. Just stop by our store and sign up today. Come on over to CCT. Life Unlimited. Hello? Wait, you're not I care. You say you are sick? What happened to our wedding rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take two Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Welcome, everybody. It's Friday, August 2nd, 2019. That's a festival Friday, Jovan. Yes. I'm Ron festival Brent. Festival is definitely in the air, and I'm Jovan Wilson, and we're ready to bring you your Indeed. news. Indeed. Wishing everyone a happy, happy 65th Emancipation Celebrations. We hope you've been having an awesome week, and now that it's over, we have a lot in store. Topping our newscast today, for almost two years of being closed to the public, uh, the ferry terminal in West End has finally resumed operations. Operations resumed yesterday, Thursday morning, August 1st. Premier and Minister of Finance and the first district representative for which the uh, terminal is in his district in a statement in the House of Assembly on Wednesday said the facility will be ready to welcome ferry vessels from the United States Virgin Islands among other international destinations. Finishing touches are still to be done at the facility in addition to a generator uh, capable of fitting the capacity of the terminal is being sought. And in addition, construction of an additional uh, facility walkway at the ferry dock is 90% complete. Now, Jovan, this is great news. The ferry, ter ferry terminal in West End was just one of the uh, major buildings, government buildings that sustained damages in the 2017 hurricanes. And to see it get to the point where it's you know, finally operational, I think is a really good sign. I do agree with that. This is a big win for District 1. And yes. I think by default, every person who depends correct. on that terminal. And it's not import, uh, important only for our locals, mm -hmm. but um, we have to take into, in, into consideration, sorry, our tourism product and the importance of our ports um, to encourage that tourism product. So I'm yes. really happy to see the Premier uh, making a promise and keeping it. This and one of the things we have to remember as a territory is we, we kind of have to take it almost one day at a time. Time. Uh, we've heard the saying many times before, perhaps we need to take it one project at a time and yes. kind of just take our time as we rebuild. So um, it's happening right now as we speak, the opening ceremony. Uh, we have Premier Andrew Foy, he was just making some remarks, but again, um, it's amazing to see that our West End Terminal is up and running. And as a matter of fact, the updated schedule has already been posted. Uh, ferries are now um, running to and from the U.S. Virgin Islands. So you can take a look at that schedule, which is, which is up right now. So good news. 
I am very happy to hear this. Moving right along, after four months of negotiations and intense dialogue with the industry, the Premier recently announced that the BVI will see increased cruise ship calls for the 2019-2020 season. Now, Ron, without a doubt, this is, uh, great, this is news. great news again for the industry as we try to capitalize on every lucrative opportunity to generate revenue in the Virgin Islands. Um, Norwegian, which is one of the bigger airlines, yes. the bigger cruise lines that comes to the Virgin Islands. You know, we began to worry back in 2016 when we heard that they would be, um, well, due to pending short calls, the, the head count would have decreased by yes. 180,000. Um, and that's a lot of people. I mean, when you come to think about 180,000 by an average uh, spending power of about yep. $78 per person, that deal. equates to $14 million and 40,000. Now, that's a huge, huge loss um, considering the fact that we need that revenue. Another important thing to note, however, by way of the contracts that we get into with these cruise lines, um, if they breach the contract, mm -hmm. as in this case, um, they still have to pay, or they are still mandated to pay a headcount okay. tax, which is a small amount. Um, but despite, um, that's not what we're looking for at this point in time, especially in our peak not, seasons. Yeah. We're looking for the money to come in and trickle down. We're looking for the guests to come to the BVI um, for our taxi drivers, mm -hmm. our small business owners, our vendors, to operators, and so on. Um, so if that decision would not have benefited the BVI. However, I'm, I'm very happy to see that after going back to the table, Norwegian and our current government was able to come to a new agreement, decreasing that 180,000 by 50,000. Um, and also the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line will be increasing their current booking from 32 calls to 39 calls, which of course will guarantee us another 14,000 and 22 passengers. So overall, yes. between those two cruise lines, we, we stand to benefit about $5 million from um, an additional 64,022 passengers. So great news. Awesome. In the same breath, the Premier criticized the last administration for hiding Norwegian's intention to decrease costs to the BVI. However, Honorable Van de Poel in the House of Assembly recently quickly dismissed those claims, saying that this was communicated ever since. Honorable Van de Poel further attributed the majority of the cruise ship's industry success to the strides made by the past NDP government. Um, and it said, pre-IRMA, those numbers broke local records. Now, Ron, this might be another episode <laughs> of my word against, against yours. yours. Yeah. But to a certain extent, um, we can agree with Honorable Van de Poel because Twit4 Media was able to reach out to the BVI Port Authority mm -hmm. and they were able to confirm um, in 2050 we had just about 516,000 passengers. Pull out the 2016, statistics, yeah. uh, just about 700,000. 2017, of course. We had the uh, catastrophes, uh, 400,000, 409,000. And 2018, we saw a major decline, 171,644 passengers. But, you know, regardless of the political insertions mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody just trying to take credit for the industry, um, I think the cruise ship industry, the marine industry on the whole, has proven to be one of the most resilient, especially post-ARMA. And I just think we just need all... We need to work collectively right, to right. ensure that it's where it's supposed to be. Well, you made a valid point in reference to, you know, not only taking blame, but, you know, taking, um, you know, the fall and the praise for whatever, whatever goes. But it's funny enough that we have a lot of accusations and Honorable Antifubu is finally in the house to refute <laughs> or to say yes or no to some of these accusations. So we're happy to have him there to, we're happy to, to speak have up. Him back. Yeah. Up next, we have King Pato. He is still king. Still king. And government to fund Willock's illegal fees. These and more stories when 284 News returns. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man. I've been looking for this for weeks. 
brilliant hands and minds tutoring services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only, registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, brilliant hands and minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Welcome back, viewers. Of course, you know we are in the heart of our 60-50 emancipation celebrations. Yes, and a lot has been happening is, a lot has been 17 happening, days. And it could not go unnoticed without the annual Calypso show. Let me tell you, uh, <laughs> last night, King Pedro, who is still the king, obviously, a little mm -hmm. after 1.30 p.m. Uh, on Thursday, the one and only was proved that he is still the king by winning the 2019 Virgin Islands Emancipation uh, Festival Calypso competition held at the Primetime Festival in Rotown, Tortola. His songs, Bring Your Culture On and the Letta, Waya and Safa, King Pedro <laughs> beat out crowd favorites, Lady Liberty and former winner, Sister Joyce. The first runner-up was Sister Joyce and second runner-up went to Lady Liberty. King Pedro also won awards for best social commentary, best stage performance, and best lyrics. Sister Joyce received the prize for best arrangement and Lady Liberty uh, for best humor. Now, despite, um, you know, this crowd was a little bit um, interesting, a lot more older persons, uh, but the Calypso show, what it does, and I think it's so fascinating, is it really brings to the forefront a lot of the issues that we have been um, you know, experiencing throughout the year. And these guys did a phenomenal job. I mean, they were entertaining. Um, you know, everybody had their crowd favorites, but it was it was turned up down there. And now, of course, Baron, the one mm -hmm. and only, um, when he graced the stage, it was quite interesting to see him um, at his age still delivering such a phenomenal performance. Well, you know, Pedro, especially King mm -hmm. Pedro, and um, I know Shireen Flax, Charles, yes. as well as uh, Sister Joyce, these are veterans in Calypso, what the BVI calls yes. Kaiso. Um, they've dominated the stage over the years and continues to do so, even at this age. And I think that's one of the yeah, things that's most refreshing about it. Like you said, Calypso captures social commentary and it delivers delivers it in such an entertaining way. And and being that it's a part of our culture mm -hmm. and you know they're still there they're still doing it they're still handing it on to the, the current generations i just think it's super refreshing well one thing that was absolutely fascinating for me was to see the honorable shireen uh charles flex charles um who has been a calypsonian and a lyricist for a very long time it was really nice to see her still come out and um serve in that capacity but she sang a song there her second song and <laughs> I, I i literally have to tip my hats yes. off to her as a born and raised uh, Virgin Islander, it, the song was titled uh, I Born Here. Mm -hmm. No, Jovan, um, culturally, that phrase has always taken on a negative connotation I because agree. It, 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 you know, the weights come across, it's right. always just rubbed the wrong way. But in her lyrics, it was she, she, patriotism at its best. Yes. Um, and it really uh, emphasized why we as Virgin mm -hmm. Islanders are so proud. The same way somebody might uh, say, you know, Trinidad, we have the best curry, or we have this. No, well, Guyana has the I best curry. You think so? Okay. No, right. Guyana has the best curry. All right. Well, we have, <laughs> we have the best uh, pig tail. Slang. <laughs> Uh, with uh, fi um, fish and mayonnaise sauce. Fish and mayonnaise sauce, but all pig tail has uh, sugar and milk. Listen, so right. it was just awesome to see her in that. Yes. In that, that realm and uh, really just and a remarkable delivering night. a positive flair positive, too. That's yeah. very term, like you said, and that's the power of music. Yes. Music is a universal language. But particularly at a point where we're talking about the whole regularization and yes. fast track Such initiative. Such a sensitive time. Such a sensitive time. Uh, kudos to her. Yeah. And healing. It brings healing. Indeed. In responding to the leader of the opposition's questions regarding the payment of fees in the case of Honorable Julian Willock versus Honorable Mark Vanterpool, the Honorable Premier was finally able to confirm that government is currently footing the cost of the trial. Now, Ron, we are talking about over a quarter of a million dollars. This is a lot of money. The Premier said that to date, the government's treasury has, has inherited a legal fee debt of $270,526.20, of which $136,525 was already paid. Um, 
that might sound like a large amount, uh, but even more shockingly, that is not the final amount. Yeah. Uh, due to the case still being within the courts, we, we've heard that, that that cost is not finite. More than likely, um, it will be increasing. When questioned by Honorable Marlon Penn on whether the fees are likely to increase, Honorable Foy said he cannot confirm anything further at that time, but the remaining balance will be finalized and pay, paid after the case concludes, according to the Premier. Now, Very interesting. I, I, I do find it to be super <laughs> interesting um, because there's a justification mm -hmm. as well. Uh, the Premier, before providing the cost, delivered the reasoning behind the government inheriting the set mm -hmm. fees. He said, Mr. Vantapool filed two claims with the Attorney General as an interested party. Unfortunately, the Attorney General could not represent the Speaker because he had given certain advice to Mr. Vantapool. Furthermore, the Attorney General was himself sued as an independent party in the case. Um, as we can see, the speaker was therefore compelled to seek independent legal representation to avoid any conflict of mm. interest and ethical issues that could arise. He said due to the conflict of interest, it was best for the speaker to seek legal counsel. What do you think? Uh, I think uh, the premier is playing a very interesting game. Um, they have to do what they have to do. But I think at the end of the day, there is no uh, justification for what uh, we went through with that whole saga. Uh, for how long it lasted and now of course with the inheritance of the legal fees um, when it comes to the attorney general it's very interesting because uh, as much as he's saying what he's saying I honestly think that either way you put it the attorney general's in either case uh, his his or her uh, findings are sometimes very biased uh, towards uh, whomever the, the sitting government, government is um, and that's just my personal opinion we've seen it not only with this administration but with the uh, Smith administration so that really doesn't sit um, and, and, and hold much substance to me uh, with the Attorney General, but, you know, it's his take, and we respect the Premier's uh, stand. Well, I think the members of the electorate has been disadvantaged in so many ways as in this specific case, um, and political observers have as well. They have long opined that this matter should have been resolved in the House of Assembly. I think by now everybody agrees. It should not have gone to the courts. Gone to the, it, I don't think it should have gone that far. Um, and just how we see that the premier who had, you know, stepped in and said, listen, it's going on too, too long, let's put an end to it. That could have been done earlier. But, you know, it's over now, so we got a whole set of money to pay. <laughs> Still ahead, uh, Cynthia Brown to walk free and the weekly arrest blotter. Stay tuned. You're watching To It For News. Is business slow, cash flow down, hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and the UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching 284 News. We all would remember the Tennessee sex trafficking case that resulted in 16-year-old Cynthia Brown killing a real estate agent, of course, that would eventually land her a life mm -hmm. imprisonment sentence. Wow. Well, viewers, she is now set to walk free on August 7th after being granted full clemency for the crime by then-Governor Bill Haslam after serving 15 years in prison. Now, Ron, I'm sure you remember this was yes. a huge story. A it deal. took the international A tragic by story, storm. too, in, yes. in a lot of ways. Um, and it sparked a lot of international fury, protests. I mean, everybody was speaking out. Uh, for those of you who do not know what happened, Cynthia um, said at the tender age of 16, her 24-year-old boyfriend, who was a pimp, um, forced her into prostitution. Now, on the night of the offense, she was sent out by her boyfriend and met the deceased who picked her up at a restaurant and bought her food and took, him mm -hmm. back, took her back to his house. Um, 
she said he then proceeded to intimidate her by pointing a gun to her and referencing his experience as a military sharpshooter. Now, in fear of the possibility that he, he may have been reaching for mm -hmm. a gun, she shot him, a single shot to his head, and of course, that resulted in his death. Now, to add to that, the man's father, the deceased father, uh, he suffered a fatal heart attack just shortly after his son's death. Wow. So essentially what we were seeing in this case is her being sentenced and her being charged and arrested um, for two yeah. murders. Now what's interesting about this case is in that state, which is the state of Tennessee, um, a life sentence is a minimum of 51 years without parole, which is the longest minimum sentence run in the country for teens and adults who receive a life sentence. I think what's amazing, however, about this story, and this is what we love about protests and democracy yes, and people raising speaking awareness. out. Um, in 2012, due to the pressures, um, the U.S. Supreme Court was forced um, to reform the system and you know they found that sentencing these juveniles to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole it was unconstitutional mm -hmm. 51 years a 16 year old that's ludicrous yeah, yeah, it's crazy um, and this is you know this one really hits close to home again because when we think about extreme sentencing just recently we've had a local case yes. regarding um, extreme sentencing you are essentially you know, you are hindering that person's life for the rest of their life. Yeah, well, well I think we, um, the legal system here locally, uh, they're hosting a seminar as it pertains to uh, sentencing guidelines and what's required. And I think it's and extremely that is much important, needed. very needed from the top of the uh, ladder all the way down because uh, I don't think uh, the legal system as it stands, uh, and I could only talk about locally, but here's a, a prime example. It does not always, first of all, fit the crime, um, and we don't leave room for proper rehabilitation. There are extreme cases, and last week we covered stories where uh, five U.S. men are going to be executed because of the, their heinous crimes. Right. But in a case like this, when you look at a lot of the aggregating factors, one, she was a minor at the time. Uh, two, 16 years yeah, old. When you think of issues such as prostitution, Yes. Um, and, and, and having that situation really come to light, I think the protest and the demonstrations really, uh, really allowed for them to take a look, which is phenomenal. One of the great things coming out of this story is the fact that she was able to acquire her associates as well as her bachelor's degree Wonderful. while in prison. So for again, 16 years? She served 15 okay. years. She went in at 16. She's now 31 years old. Um, of course, on August 7, due to the overhaul of the Constitution, Cynthia Brown will now be able to walk free due to mercy. And she can actually get a job. Yes. Yeah, good stuff. And here's this week's uh, weekly arrest blotter. Kevin Smith, 25, of Young Island, arrested and charged for assault occasioning actual bodily harm and destroying property. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Robert Henry, 47, of Vantapool Estate, was arrested and charged for assault occasioning body, actual body harm. He was granted bail in the amount of $30,000. John uh, dollars, sorry. We have a John Maduro, 45, of Greenland, arrested and charged for assault occasioning actual bodily harm. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Edison Crook, uh, 26, of East End, arrested and charged for being armed with an offensive weapon. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000 as well. Colleen Davis, 28, of Little Dicks Hill, arrested and charged for destroying property. He was uh, granted bail in the amount of $5,000. We have a uh, Javon Henry, 31 of Greenland, uh, arrested for threatening language, insulting language, and indecent language. He was granted bail in the amount of $3,000. Philip Jacobs, 43 of Harrigan Estate, arrested and charged for failing to give name and address and resisting arrest. He was granted bail in the amount of $2,000. So a lot going on for the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. But I want to take this time out, ladies and gentlemen uh, and viewers, to really make a, a public appeal. We are in the heart of our 65th Emancipation oh, Celebrations, yes. and we're having a wonderful time. Yes. Uh, we can tell from our experiences in our pictures, persons from all walks of life are enjoying themselves. But I want to really make a public appeal for persons within our community to really take the issue of drunk driving seriously. Um, it is not a matter that should be uh, taken lightly. And we don't want, when we look at the statistics and the amount of uh, accident um, accidents we have and road fatalities, this point, at this time, um, when we're celebrating really needs to be taken um, into consideration. So yes. you need to, first of all, know your limit. Um, 
you travel in groups, carpool, um, mm -hmm. don't leave your friends behind, um, and just really think about it because just the same way you're putting your life in danger, you're putting someone else's life in danger. So as we celebrate, we got to think about these stuff. Yes, it's important that we exercise responsibility and give the police one less case to deal with. Everybody's Indeed. trying to have some fun. Our viewers, we just want to implore you to indulge in the 65th festival. Yes, uh, tonight is the on. International Reggae Night. Uh, Taurus Rally performs alongside yes. Roman Virgo. Night for the lovers. And by the way, if you missed our interview, go to our page to see our interview with Taurus Riley. He was in studios today. Um, on Sunday, I think we had the Miss British Virgin Islands yes. pageant. And we have Juve, sponsored by CCT. And you know we're going to be there. It's a, it's a vibe. It's a, vibe. <laughs> it's a true <laughs> turn up. Uh, but that's it for today's News Roundup. We want you to go like us on Facebook at 24 Media. This was Twit for BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. I'm Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. Be sure to like us, uh, join us, sorry, every Tuesday and Friday at 3 p.m. as we deliver honest and impartial news right here on Twit for News. But next week, of course, uh, August, Monday, and Tuesday is a holiday. Yes. So we won't be here. We're going to be at the uh, parade and then on Parts Tuesday. Race horse race. Uh, so we'll be coming to you live with our news coverage on Wednesday. All right. Uh, so do enjoy yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Again, happy festival and happy Friday. And happy turn up. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy. How may I assist you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the pre-made party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top of your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Hello? Wait, you had a long time. Yeah. You were saying you were sick? What happened to Albany rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pear Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I'll see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today.